Hi, my name is Alicia. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make changes to the information about members of your family on Family Tree. As you progress with your research, you may find new information which you can add to an existing entry, such as a more precise location or date. Also, any information that has been entered wrongly in the past by yourself or others can be corrected readily in Family Tree. Today, I'm showing some example data in a sandbox or training area, which I can use to practice and improve my skills. Obtaining this screen was described in a previous video called Adding Names to Family Tree. The link you need is shown on screen now and in the text that accompanies this video. I'm going to show you how to edit a person's details, review the history of any changes and restore to a previous value. Finally, I'll demonstrate how to delete a record and restore that record again if required. Let me show you how these operations are completed. Here, I'm looking at the opening screen for my training data. In this family, there is one child called Mike Neep, who does not have a gender entered. I click the link to show the summary card, and then Person to see the details screen. In the Vital Information section, I can click Open Details to expand all the items in this section. From here, I could go to each type of information and make changes as needed. In this case, I just want to add the gender and I can open that section alone. To make a change, I click the entry, which is already present, then click Edit and make the change I require. Before saving, I give my reasons for the change. When completing this field, we are recommended to use complete sentences. In order to keep the tone professional and neutral, write in the third person, such as the 1851 England and Wales census shows that the gender was male. We should focus the explanation on the ancestor whose data is being recorded and the sources used to find the information. There are more recommendations given in the full instruction manual and the link to that is given in the text accompanying this video. For some of the data types, I can delete an entry. For example, if I believe it to be wrong but don't yet have the correct information. Here, the christening date is given as 56 years before the birth date. Since I don't yet have the correct christening date, I decide to just delete the false information that is present and give my reason as before. When entering a date or place, the program offers to help by suggesting a number of them in a standardised format. I'll edit a place to illustrate this feature. I begin typing the place. After a few moments, a drop-down list of standardised places appears. If I want the system to keep exactly what I entered, I can select none of the above from the bottom of the list or click elsewhere on the screen. If one of these is correct and what I want, I can click on it for it to be inserted, replacing what I've entered. If I want to include extra information, that does not appear in the standardised place name, such as the name of a hospital, cemetery or church where the event took place, I do the following. Begin typing the place as I want it to appear. The system displays the closest matches in the drop-down list of standardised places. Then I can type the final part of the place as it appears in the standardised place list. The result is that the system now displays the place I typed, followed by the standardised place. The system leaves the place as I typed it, 
but connects my place with the standardized place. This helps others who may be searching for this person using a standardized place name where the event took place. To show how this has worked, I do a find operation and enter minimal information, but do enter the standardized location, which in my example was prefixed by the hospital name. The record with the place I entered comes up first on the list. To see all changes to a record, I can click Show All in the Latest Changes section. To see the history of changes for a particular type of data, for example, birth information, I click the History link in that section. Only changes to birth information are shown. By removing the birth filter, by clicking the button with the X at the side, I can see all types of change that have been made to this record. Clicking a christening item applies a filter so that only changes to the christening information are shown. I want to demonstrate how to reverse the change I made to the birth location. Here, I reactivate the birth filter again to make those changes easier to see. I click the Restore button adjacent to the item I want back. The current entry and the item I want to restore are shown side by side. I confirm my decision by clicking Restore once more. The original birth location is restored. In Family Tree, I can delete a person from the system. This also deletes the person's relationships to everyone in the tree. However, it is recommended that a person is deleted only if that person never existed. If I create a duplicate record by mistake, for example, Nancy Neep shown here, it is recommended that the two records are merged rather than one of them deleted. The merge process allows me to compare the records and choose which information to keep. If I find later that the merge was a mistake, I can undo it and restore the two separate records. That process is shown in more detail in a video called Merging Names on Family Tree. It is much harder to find and restore a person that was deleted. Here is a fictitious person which I have added as a sibling to Mike Neep, whom I was editing earlier. In the Tools section, I click Delete Person. The numbers here remind me of any relationships, sources and discussions that will be deleted. My reasons are entered and I confirm that I have reviewed the relationships and given my reason. Then click Delete. If I had made a mistake and realised that immediately, I could click Restore Person to bring the record back again. I would enter my reason and click Restore. For a limited time, the deleted record will be listed on the Person menu after I deleted it. Click the record and again select Restore Person. When the deleted person is gone from the Person menu or was deleted by someone else, I will need to find a person with whom there was a relationship. In this case, I select the father. In the Latest Changes section, I can see that the relationship was deleted. I click Show All. The item is the most recent change and therefore top of the list. Click Reference. And then the deleted person's name. 
I arrive back at the point where I can click Restore Person. I enter my reason for restoring the record and click Restore. My record is back as it was. I can see the parents at the right and the other siblings below. You can see that making additions and correcting earlier mistakes is just a case of following through step by step. Always put in your reasons to remind yourself in future why you made the change and to let other researchers who may have the same common ancestor understand your reasoning. In another video called Changing Relationships in Family Tree, I'll show you how to change relationships which are incorrect. For example, a child may have been added to the wrong parents. Family Tree has been designed to help us improve our record keeping and to collaborate with each other effectively. With collaboration, we can avoid duplication of effort and get much further, much faster and be more accurate as well. If there's anything you're not sure about in Family Tree, give it a try in the training area first. Then you'll feel confident when you come to enter your family information for real in the working section. Family history can be lots of fun and bring you great satisfaction, so give it a try soon.